very excited to double our guest total count tonight by welcoming on a couple of my favorite superheroes, the Atheist Avengers. Love and Wyatt host the Atheist Avenger podcast. They're both tireless secular activists and, of course, two of the driving forces behind Reason Con 2 in Hickory, North Carolina. Love, Wyatt. Welcome to The Scathing Atheist. Thank you very much. It's Thanks great to be here. Thanks for having us. Oh, you bet. Now, first of all, Love, last time I spoke with you, you were just Love. You are now Captain Love, so I suppose I should congratulate you on the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's um, that pay bump was right. was really important, let me tell you. <laughs> Much deserved. And, and Wyatt, last time I talked to you, you had a different name altogether, but we'll keep secret identities out of this. Uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll <laughs> definitely just... wasn't Clark Kent, y'all. All right, Incognito. so... <laughs> there we go. We're good at that. We're good at that. Now, you guys are... The Atheist Avengers. Tell me, what exactly do you avenge? <laughs> it's a hard-hitting question, isn't it? Yes. I'm not giving you guys uh, softballs uh, now. Come on. I, I, was, I was waiting to see if she took this one. Uh, um, I, like, uh, I like looked at him, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> well, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot, and especially in our area, there's a lot of things to be avenged. Um, back when we had the shootings in North Carolina, we had we took a little bit of flack for using the word Avengers because uh, typically people think of that as an, a violent term. You're you're when you're avenging something, you're you're avenging violently. Uh, but of course, we don't use it that way. We mean it to basically stand up for the little guy who may be persecuted and oppressed. And in a lot of times, uh, people of non faith end up being that. Yeah, now I, I should mention to the listeners that you guys are out of North Carolina, which does seem to be an epicenter of weird, crazy, atheist-related uh, headlines and, and uh, seems to be yes. sort of the front line of church-state separation at the moment for whatever reason. What the hell is going I mean, Is it something you guys have in the water there or what? <laughs> well, and the worst part is um, back in um, the fall, I moved to South Carolina. So um, we're that really is the worst just, part. <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're just encompassing the crazy here in in the Carolinas. I, I don't know if it's it's got to be in the water, right? Yeah, Wyatt, well, it's in the water. Yeah, it's uh, it's bizarre to me. Um, you know, I used to be one of the chairs for the the Secular Coalition for America when I lived in North Carolina, and these bills would come across my desk, and. I, I really thought when I first started the job that somebody was like punking me. I, I really thought they were messing with me. It was like, oh, let's screw with the new girl and, <laughs> and you know, send these crazy bills across her desk and see if she buys it. And so I really thought they were messing with me. And I was like, all right, guys, you know, it's funny. You guys have sent me a few now. I get it. Ha ha. You know, you've broken me and let's get serious. And they're like, um, no, those are actual bills that are being put forth. And I was just like, what? Like, who comes up with this crazy stuff? Oh, no, I know. Just since we've been doing the show, I know we've had the, yeah, the bill where um, they, they tried to declare uh, North Carolina a Christian state. The the Bible's yeah. come up as the state book a couple of times. And, of course, like you said, the, the, yeah, the, the shooting there, you have just constant fights over monuments, et cetera. So uh, but it, glad to know that there are a couple of folks like you in the Carolinas doing that kind of work. People ask me constantly, why would you guys live – in a place like Georgia, and I say, well, that's where we're needed the most. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. exactly what I say. I mean, because uh, people ask me, why don't you move to a more liberal area? And I said, well, they don't need me there. They right. need me here. And uh, this is my home. This is where I was born. This was where I was raised. And I really see the need here because when I was first transitioning out of out of religion and, and, and trying to get information I, where did I turn? I didn't have anywhere to turn. Mm -hmm. And that kind of flows into why I put so much emphasis with ReasonCon on the podcasters. I turn to podcasters. I listen to you guys. I listen to Cognitive Distance. I listen to all these guys. And this was where I really was able to kind of get the the feedback that I wasn't able to get in person because nobody, even if they thought the way I did here in North Carolina – they certainly were not talking about right. It. So, you know, we started a little meetup, and and I got my inspiration uh, from listening to podcast, and then it just kind of went from there. And the more we grow uh, with with my humanist group here with ReasonCon, the more we grow, the more comfortable a lot of people feel coming out, and the better our community gets. Those people are here. See, that's mm -hmm. the thing. There there are atheists that go to church every Sunday because it's a social thing. It's a community thing. They feel like that's what they're supposed to do. I was there. I did that for a long time after I was starting to question my belief. 
Well, see, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up because I feel like, you know, obviously for those of us that came out of religion or, or were non-religious in a very religious area pre-internet, it was a completely different world. But I also think that there's a, an over-reliance on, on the internet that, that, you know, there are just things that you can't get without genuine human interaction. So I think it's great to, that you start with the podcast and stuff, yeah. but it's a very important step that we start these humanist groups that we meet up together and that we show people that, you know, that there is a social world that you can move into, especially these people who are so used to seeing church as their social venue. Right. And and I agree. Uh, it, it doesn't it can't just stay an online thing. It just can't stay me in my room listening to podcast, being energized and not doing anything with it. And that's why I had to move forward. And every time I'd start feeling discouraged, you know, I did meetups where it was me and one other person. Right. And and I'd walk away from those meetups and be like, How, you know, what am I doing? I'm wasting my freaking time. So it wouldn't take long before I'd be listening to another podcast and I'd be energized again. So that that's what I used to pump myself up. Awesome. It was my Mountain Dew, so to speak. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, I, I do have to ask because, I, you know, it's, it, I, I have a little masked vigilante experience and I don't have a lot of chances to chat with other crime fighting superhero. So I have to ask you guys, where do you guys fall on the cape no cape question? Are you more of an Edna Moulds or more of a James Brown? No capes. <laughs> See now I've seen the pictures on your website and I'd beg to differ. That's um, right. I, I just also wanted to say in case you're looking to expand the team or anything, I do have some, as I said, some crime fighting experience. Slowed down a lot since I moved to Georgia. Not as many supervillains here, but uh you know I still go out and avenge you know, parking violations and stuff like that now and again. Just just throwing it out. I don't know if you have a formal application process. but um, no. Now, of course, the main reason that I asked you guys on today, not that Superhero Talk isn't great and all, is that you're a couple of the organizers for my favorite annual atheist conference. That would be ReasonCon, which, when this interview airs, will be less than 10 days away. So I have to ask you, at the moment, is it more excited, nervous, or just incessant heart palpitations? Well, I was actually talking about this right before we come on. Um, I'm actually to the point now where I've kind of got everything going, and I'm I'm not freaking out as much. I've got a lot to do, but it's not one of those things where I've got a lot to do and not enough time to do it. Mm-hmm. I've actually kind of got caught up to the point where – and I've got some really good people helping me too. I mean that that's the most important part of this whole thing is I couldn't do it by myself. Uh, and they've stepped up, and they've they're really uh, taking a lot of the load off off my back, and that's the reason why I'm feeling excited right now. I'm 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 out of that panicking phase and worried about money and worried about Something this and that. Something tells me you might just wind up back in that panicking phase oh, before it's all over. I'm just, you know, I just am absolutely guess. sure I will. <laughs> but, I feel good. I, I'm totally relaxed, <laughs> but I don't have to do shit. So. Uh, <laughs> Oh, so, you will when you get here. Just right, wait. right. No, it's it literally like the the whole planning, organizing, doing, um, why it's done everything. I, you know, I, I try to promote it, but I don't actually have to do anything till it starts. And then that's when I'll be having to work my butt 72 off. 72 so. straight hours of no sleep and a lot of drinking. You know, if, if, it was, if it's anything like <laughs> it was right. last year. So, like, okay. Yeah. So why? Give us a peek behind the curtain if you can. What goes into organizing a conference like this? Well, when it all started, it was just one of those things where when I was told that it, it – because I wasn't involved, so to speak, for last year. I, I wasn't really involved. I helped out, but I wasn't involved in organizing it. And when I heard that it may not happen again, I was devastated. So then as I thought about it, I said, well, somebody's got to step up and do this. And can we make this happen? One of the biggest things I struggle with is last year it was a free event. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year there are ticket prices, and and I, if there was any possible way to do it and still be a free event, I would have done that, but it's not possible. And I think people understand why we had to charge for the tickets. Well, if you, you know, want the it, good speakers, if you and, and you've got a, a hell of a slate of speakers, yeah, somebody's got to pay for it. So. Right, right. And, it's you know, to put on a good conference, everybody's kind of got to share the cost because – if I was rich enough to do it, I'd do it, but I'm not. So if everybody shares the cost with me, then we can all have a good time. But it's just been a lot of getting it. You know, social media is great nowadays for promotion. Uh, I've just been really bombarding social media with it. I put up the website myself, taught myself how to build websites. Uh, and that was a that was a process in itself. It took right. me a lot longer to do because I didn't know what I was doing. 
put it all together. And, and like I said, I, I relied on my, my humanist group here in Hickory, North Carolina to, to support me. And they did, uh, they jumped in and they started helping. And I've got some really awesome people. My, my secretary, uh, for the humanists and my vice president, they are absolutely, and you'll see them at the, at the uh, conference running around, uh, with their staff t-shirts on and they'll be definitely working their butts off and they've been doing that this whole time. So, you know, it, it just, it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work, mm-hmm. but it's absolutely going to be worth it. Well, now th- I, I like what you were saying about everybody sort of sharing the cost. And I think that one of the things that I liked the most about uh, reason con last year is that it did seem like sort of a shared event. It seemed like it was something that we were all in together. Um, I've been to a few of these conferences before, but, but this one, like it, it, it was so much more personal. You know, there were so many efforts to make uh, to give everybody a chance to interact with all the speakers and meet everybody. So, right. what are you guys going to do this year to to keep that going to make it personal again? Well, the the after party like we had last year is going to be almost exactly the same. We're in the same place. We're in the same building. We did move into the larger space for the speakers this year, uh, but we're going to have free reign of the lobby and things. So nobody. Nobody's going to be tied to their chair. It's not. We're not going to take attendance. We're not going to force everybody to sit down and listen. So we've got the speakers. That's going to be a pretty intense, just like it was last year, but there's going to be breaks and there's going to be times. We're having a lunch in the park. We're going to actually leave the hotel and go over and have lunch in a, in a park that's not too far away. Field trip. We're going to yeah. have a field trip. <laughs> We're going to have some good North Carolina barbecue from oh, Hannah's like Barbecue. Oh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. And uh, that that's just going to be a, a wonderful time for people to hang out in a park and talk with each other. Uh, so then, you know, the speaker uh, lineup is pretty intense, and it, a lot of people are going to want li- to sit and listen to the speakers, and that's absolutely fine. But the, the podcaster throng afterwards is just there's nothing scheduled for that. We're going to do that little game show, and then we're just going to, there's no schedule. We're just going to hang out just like we did last year. Everybody can do recordings. Nobody can do recordings. It doesn't matter. Do whatever you want and uh, have a good time. And I got to say, that's the only rule. one of the coolest things about it. Of all of the uh, the intense organization that went into last year's, the best time I think that uh, that I had certainly and that probably most of the people that, that, that attended had was just sort of that improvised uh, uh, after party that uh, – uh, yeah. certainly, certainly, uh, several of my favorite memories. Now you mentioned the speakers here. Now I, I apologize if this is like asking you to pick a favorite kid or anything, but is there like a particular <laughs> talk that you guys are really looking forward to or? Oh, well, no, I can't possibly pick one. I'm mean, just <laughs> absolutely excited about them all. You know, there's, uh, it, it's so diverse. We've, we've got several different feminist uh, type activists, uh, then we have David Fitzgerald there to talk about the historicity of Jesus, and and he's going to be doing a talk titled uh, Sexy Violence, Violent Sex. Come on. He's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. He's got a great sense of humor, and he's a lot of fun to have a drink with. So I'm super excited about that, that he's coming this year. That That's awesome. Awesome. Well, no, I, I got to say, I don't have to worry about stepping on anybody's toes because I'm just going to be rude and everything to everybody anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing Tracy Harris again. She gave such a good oh, talk yeah. oh, yeah. last year. Really glad to see that she's coming back. Now, uh, OK, so it's hard for me to imagine that anybody listening in isn't already salivating at their chance to head to Reason Con. But on the off chance that somebody is still unconvinced, give me the hard sell, guys. Why should I, the random scathing atheist listener, go to Reason Con? The, the like I talked about before, the fact that we're focused on the podcasters is because the podcasters are usually the first line of defense. So we're really looking towards not only the people who have been in this movement, who are kind of concrete in the uh, groups that they're involved with, uh, but we're also looking for the newbies, the people who maybe haven't ventured out to a conference before. We bring those people in. We get those people in with the podcasters. They they come to meet their their favorite podcaster. Uh, the podcasters come to meet their fans, and then you've got the people who's been in the movement for a while. Everybody gets together. This is actually a, a community building conference. One one of the the articles that was written here in Hickory talked about it being a rah rah session for us atheists. It's a rah rah session. We're getting together to kind of pat each other on the back and say, "Hey, you're doing a good job." 
I appreciate what you do. Keep on doing it. Sounds good to me. We need a pep rally now and again. Absolutely. It, and to me, it's like a family reunion with all your favorite relatives. <laughs> That's right. That to me is what Reason Con is. Um, it's it's where I get to hang out with my favorite people in the world and just be myself and and to get to share ideas and just hang out with each other. So, yeah, to me, it's a, it's a family reunion with my favorite relatives. Okay. So for the people, for the listeners out there um, with families like mine, to me, it was nothing like a family reunion. So. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should say without Crazy Uncle Bob and his handgun. Yeah, like I said, yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. relatives. <laughs> Um, yeah, that would yeah. be you could fill a booth <laughs> with uh, my family reunion on those guys. All right, so uh, now we've just got a couple minutes left. If if anybody's listening, they haven't already picked up their tickets for Reason Con on Saturday, April twenty fourth in Hickory, North Carolina. Where should they go to find them? They should go to reasonnc.com. Reasonnc.com. Uh, they can go right there. They can buy their tickets. They can see the lineup of speakers and podcasters and the schedule and who's sponsoring us and. There's even links to hotel rooms and all of that good kind of stuff. So they need to go to ReasonNC.com and get your tickets. We're actually already sold out of one of the tickets. We've got three different ticket groups. We've got a standard ticket, which gets you a pass to all day Saturday. That's all day, including the podcast we're throwing that night. The standard ticket gets you into the party. Uh, then we have the VIP. If you want to come Friday night and have dinner, we do have VIP dinner tickets left, but they're going fast, too. They're almost gone. The VIP Plus tickets, which included drinks, is actually already gone. So you better get on there. If you want to come to the dinner, it's going to be – you're going to want to come to the dinner. There's going to be some awesome, awesome entertainment by one of my favorite podcasters. <laughs> they're going to be there uh, doing some wonderful stuff. So get that VIP dinner ticket worst case scenario get your standard ticket and come out saturday and join us all day and party that night excellent excellent well wyatt love thanks so much for your time tonight all the time that you've put into the conference and of course for all the avenging thank you very much absolutely